This is the Ascension Parish Mental Health Board and Addictive Disorders Advisory Board. We're going to call it to order. All members are present. Second on the agenda is the minutes from last month to get approval. I'll make a motion we approve minutes. Brian makes a motion to approve the minutes. Second. A second. Second by uh, Jerry. Any objections? If not, minutes. No objections. Minute stands is approved. Two thirds vote. We don't have any emergencies. Public comment. Anybody wishing to speak in the public? Status report from the Donaldsonville Clinic. And Ryan is not here. Is somebody going to give that report? Nobody's going to give that report. Okay, bye. Uh, then we have the status report from the parish mental health and. From Dr. Susan Menendorf. Thank you. First of all, there's an error on your report under number one, mental health service statistics. If you look at the July statistics, um, we scheduled appointments with 1,088 clients. We served 840, which is a 77% kept uh, appointment rate. I think you all have a different number on yours. That I made a mistake and then corrected it in a later version. And I'd like to point out that in July we made uh, 104 more appointments than July of 06 and we served 191 more clients in July, than in July of 06. If you look up that last column all the way to January, you can see that we're serving 150 to 200 more people with one less staff, so we're doing more with less. I'm, I'm very, very proud of my staff. They're doing very well. They're working very hard. We have an excellent staff. <laughs> Under the Donisonville statistics, skipping down the page, um, we're seeing uh, providing about 10 orientate, 10 people coming to orientation, 10 to group, and about 8 to mental health appointments. Um, people are making appointments, but they're not keeping them. Um, we've had one day when nobody showed up at all for their appointments, and a couple of days in the past month when only one person came. So I still had the counselor there for eight hours, um, but um, it's not for lack of making the appointments, it's, it's just that people are not coming. They're just. Collections. We have. Susan, I'm sorry. She's got a question. I was just going to ask if. Um, do you have any suggestions about what might improve that rate? Have y'all found success with anything in in Gonzales that has improved your rate? Um, I, I'm not sure how to answer that because a lot of the Donisonville people come to Gonzales mm -hmm. out of preference for their services. And um, over the, I've been here about two and a half years. We have ramped up and had more people in Donisonville. At one point we had two counselors and even a clerical person. And it worked well for two, three, four weeks, five weeks, and then it started dwindling, and I had to draw them back. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and then we've done it again. Then, so it, it seems to be a pattern. We're going to keep trying. Okay. Is there any follow-up when people don't keep their appointments? Do you think that would make a difference? Do we have any any idea why they're not keeping appointments? Uh, no, we really don't. Um, you know, people have a right to refuse treatment. It's, sure, it's our. It's our right. Mm -hmm. So what what but do you have in the appointments? What do they have on them. on on in the Gonzalez Clinic that the Donaldsonville Clinic doesn't have? If they're coming from Donaldsonville to Gonzalez for preferences, I think uh, it must be some type of reasoning somewhere. They, there is what what people have told us, and we ask them a lot, is that they feel it's more private for them in Gonzalez, and they just prefer to do that. So let's. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, but that's well. Really that's the what? purpose. That's Over the purpose of we trying to change the name of the building on the outside. Well, I don't for think changing like the name that, of the building you know, makes and, any difference. I'm just saying. I mean, in in general, yeah, it makes a big difference. But when you pass there, and Mayor Sullivan made a, a good comment on on that. He was one of the ones that uh, 
requested maybe that we look into doing that maybe and it increase the services there. I mean, we're trying to do everything we can uh, to, to to bring the bring the people to the Dallasville Clinic, but there should there's some type of reasoning somewhere there where they don't have in Gonzales that they have in Donaldsonville, and whatever it is, maybe we can make it compatible at both clinics. Well, one of, one of the one of the basic yes. problems is that we have 90,000 people in, on this side of the river, and you know, a much smaller population. So yeah, but um, if you if what I'm saying, you're missing what I'm saying. I understand that. We understand that Gonzales is bigger than Donaldsonville. My thing is, it's where the needs are. Okay, you could have a million people over here with two people that need the services, but you might have thirty thousand in Donaldsonville and twenty nine thousand need services. So it's, you, you, you can't really evaluate it like that, you know. Needing the service and being willing to get the service, or to, and I agree with you absolutely, but, yeah, no. you know, we can't. We well, can't what, what, what are your process if somebody don't show up for their appointment? What do y'all do? Nothing. Nothing? Y'all don't make a phone call to find out why they didn't come to their appointment or uh, go out to the see council, why they don't come? No, no, we don't go, no, we don't go to, we're not allowed to do that. But we can call and the counselors do follow up. I don't know what you would what each individual counselor does. Um, but I can certainly ask our Donisonville counselor to call and find out why people are not coming. I certainly Yeah, I'm that. saying look like that should have been done, you know, prior to, you know, at least fifteen. And as 20 I said she minutes might be doing it, I haven't asked her that. So I'll, I'll certainly do that. And it's a small number that we're talking about anyway. But yeah, look, we have a little over 7,000 people in the whole town, so it's a small town, and, and uh, but we do want to have the services there for them. We also run the Strengthening Families program there, and, um, you know, we see three or four people each cycle for that. I had I had a reason for asking that question. That's why. Because um, uh, uh, in the future, uh, email came across, across, my, across me uh, stating that, why I have services in Donaldsonville and we got 8,000 people over here and what it was, 10,000 over there. And that's why I made the statement that I made. So I just wanted to let you know I clarified that. Well, my question is, we have fans and tall in the building and we also pay a DA. Does the DA send us children that we need to see after they go to court? And there's no children from Donaldsonville that the DA sends us? Oh, yes, I'm sure. But they have the same problem. They can't get people to come for their services either. When they, the DA, I thought they had to come if the DA. You know, they're not going to put them in jail. Well, I don't know. They said well, they told me after the second time they missed them, they put them in jail. Well, I was okay. just wondering, are they scheduled in Donaldsonville then? The children from Donaldsonville? They're available to be scheduled if they send them. They have to come through our referral process, and we certainly are happy to see them there. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Well, Tyler. that's what I'm saying. We're try I'm trying to get the children from Donaldsonville that the DA sends to us that live in Donaldsonville sent there. The children from Finns that Finns see, and I'm under the understanding, uh, uh, talking to the counselors from Finns, that they say they have to send theirs I'm just about to, say that. To, to talk to a counselor. And why aren't those scheduled there on Tuesday and then be there? we got to work out a deal with Finns and then before the we Finns go. Finns director tells me that they do get scheduled, but they can't, they can't make the people they, come to their Finns appointments, much less to their mental health appointments. So okay. we, we can work some more with um, Ms. Hassenbola, who's the director. But I was told, I was told through Finns, okay, I used to work Finns uh, about five years ago, and I was told through Finns that the only way they can be involved with fans is if they have mental health counseling. Counseling, that's it's what, what we I want to say. It's, it's the, the terminology I want to use yeah. or, or facilitate with both. In other, wor in other words, you could not be with the fans program without getting treatment or getting some type of feedback from a counselor. I think it'd be very okay, helpful. Okay, so if to fans, ask no, 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 just let me finish. So my thing is, if, if the kids come into Donaldsonville in the Fins program, what counselor is seeing these kids as far as being in the program? Which Somebody got to Ms. see Ms. Hassenbola, I think she, you should invite her to come and talk to uh -huh. you about this because you know. she's the person yeah, who can answer those questions. Yeah. Well, I'm just before, trying to figure out what the turnover, you know, why the kids are not being treated. Well, yeah, you know? she's supposed to be part of the, um, the focus group with the needs assessment right. to see exactly yeah. what they need. So that would be a good 
opportunity for us to for her to um, help it us understand that process. It would be very helpful process. to direct yeah. these questions and, to her. And, and, and if, if, if we don't start using that building, we're going to be better off if we shut that building down. Well, that's if what we it does. We cannot the, get fins. The way, the way since it seems is like that's what they're trying to do, but uh, well, I'm going to let that happen. Not long as I'm holding Jerry, the seat on the well, board. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> after, you know. What I'm trying to say is, fins should use their own facility if they're not giving us no services. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why are we right. renting them to right. the building if they if we're not taking advantage of what we're giving them? But that's what I was told. I was told every okay. child that they have in their program. I even had a pamphlet on it. I wish I'd have had. I bring it to the next meeting that. A counselor from mental health or some type of counseling that's have right. to be. That was told to me. So I mean, well, that's why I brought the question to the board. We board. have a lot of that's fence clients. Fence certainly. Off, or we renew that contract. Yes. And, did, and did I you get talked that? to um, Lynn Hasenbola called me mm -hmm. and said that she was going to meet with us as part of the needs assessment to give us all the information on that. So I gave her name to uh, Miss Lorinda Colon and. She was supposed to contact her um, to have her attend focus groups in some of the meetings. Very good. Okay. okay. Listen, Madam Chairman, several of the reasons that some of the people gave for the building in Donaldsonville that it was unkept, it wasn't presentable looking, but we were on top of it. I was glad to be able to say that we're in the process of repairing that now, bringing it up to date. Okay. Thank you. Under clinic collections, um, I gave you some information on these topics. We'll discuss them at the uh, budget meeting that we have on the second Wednesday. So if you have any questions about the materials that I gave you, please uh, let Mrs. Gotro know so she can bring them up. Under personnel, um, we've had a request from the drug diversion counselor who is paid under the district attorney's invoice that you all approve every Excuse month. Excuse me, Miss yes. Miss um, Mendo. Um, not cutting you off, but under clinic clinic collections, I would appreciate if you, you know, catch every section you have here. Well, I, I talked to Ms. Gotra about this, and she said she would prefer not to discuss this in an open forum. So I have attached some memos that explain each of these issues, and um, you tell me that you didn't at the last budget meeting. Do you, I'm happy. No, to go but see, the reason reasoning for me asking this is because. The things you have down here, I would like to be clarified with it. You have an attached memo. I understand that. Okay. I understand. But I need you. I mean, this is your uh, oh, project, if right? You want, if you want to talk about it, that's I, fine. No, I don't have a problem talking about it. My problem is I don't want nothing to be going to the council being approved without us knowing it. This doesn't have anything to do with the well, council. It has to do with Mrs. Gotra's request that we no, not discuss No, I understand. It. I understand. Well, we'll that. discuss okay. it here, Mrs. Ms. Okay. Susan. I don't mind discussing it. Okay. But, but the first uh, issue is... Jerry. Hmm? Uh-uh. No, I, my thing is the reason why I asked that, and I'm not trying to be bashful in anything. Uh, I was just telling y'all to pull because a lot of things that in the past that we've been going over in meetings been getting approved by the council and we don't know nothing about it after it happened. I agree with you. But this so this why. this information is in here and I did talk to Susan and I did ask her for some information that I haven't received yet. You have a second paper in your Yeah, I have it. In your thing there. Everybody finds it. Well, as long as you know it, I mean, you know, uh -huh. I just don't want it. Well, what what I needed to know before I decided on whether we were going to cut or, or not cut anything off. It's like, how many of these are children that are sent from the DA's office over there? That's the how question many, you asked How earlier. many are, um, are children from Fins and Tall that's not paying? Or does Fins and Tall receive money to reimburse us if they're children? Or so? There's just so many questions here that I ask for answers, and Ms. Susan hadn't gotten back with, to me with them. But well, $2, if we, we charge $2 last uh, a couple of years ago, we made that rule thinking that the $2 would make somebody that made an appointment keep their appointment if they had to pay $2. Mm -hmm. Well, undoubtedly, that's not uh, panning out too well either. But this idea that we're going to send three bills out that cost me $4 to send it to collect $2 is ridiculous in my book. And, and then as far as down here, where we're going to stop seeing somebody if they don't pay. Well, if they need our help, I don't believe we should stop seeing them. So we have to find a little bit better reasons out how to change this collection system. And if anybody has any suggestions. Well, under, under, um, under the clinic collection, the, the 
extra sheet that you have with the problems and the, the pro yeah. proposed solution, mm -hmm. there is some answers in there, and that's what I thought we got this that's to what, look that's at. That's what you asked me for. In, yeah, uh, and that's what I, well, you have the answers to some of it here, we, I feel. We were not able to get all of the answers because we don't break out all of those categories. Our, our practice management software, we, we sat down with the aging report for some period of time trying to ferret out the answers. Um, and but, we couldn't right. get them all. Well, you see, but like that's it, why I tried to write it up for you, so you could look at that. We don't need an answer on this tonight. Okay, so that's that's so one I'll question. Like you don't to, want the answer tonight? No, 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 yeah. no. I'm just giving it to you to to look at, to think about, to talk about. Um, we would never cut somebody off who needs our service, but we ask if someone cannot pay the fee that they ask for a fee reduction or that the fee be if waived. Their, if their counselor waives it, yes What's happening is that they're not asking, they're building up a fee, and they're just not paying. And well, um, so, the, so the billing clerk sends out, I think I put 750 bills a month, mm -hmm. and 525 go to people who may only owe $2. And well now, would it be them. illegal for your billing person to talk to the counselor of this person that's not paying and uh, Oh, she does that. Okay, why didn't she she ask the counselor to ask them she to, does to she ask does and, and it still doesn't get brought up. Sometimes sometimes it you know, it, it becomes a clinical yeah. issue uh, okay. and it's followed up with the counselor but, but many times I don't know, so yeah. you work up front, what do people well, say? Well, like I said, two dollars and ten dollars. The other thing is like the district attorneys, the children that they send in, they should before and if it's it's money there why don't we make them pay before we release that child's records to the district attorney Ms. Italian, is there any way maybe we could do a committee on this and like sure babe this is a really complicated day day. yeah I, I believe so but but we don't want to turn anybody away for for right. not paying and it's don't bill somebody two dollars or, or ten dollars right now until we can talk this over because it's ridiculous to send out four dollars to get two dollars. the memo and we'll, we'll discuss it more because it's very very complicated. All right. right but you have it very plain in what you've given us here that after so many writing well you do it three times and then you write it off so that is the answer to some of it. Correct. Then here you have where it can be the current balance due can be for the closed out cases is approximately thirteen thousand nine hundred seventy four dollars you can close that out when a patient doesn't come back anymore that that's mm -hmm. simple you have it no, very have plain it. here. We need your permission to do that. We, okay I that's what I was I asking when do you that, want the yeah. permission because I thought when you gave us but, this. But I, w I would say don't give the permission tonight. Read Let me talk to Celeste and, we'll, oh, yeah, okay. and we'll come back okay. Thank you. The other uh, issue that is on your notes is that we had some problems balancing our cash receipts and this is a very tiny problem but it's happened twice in a couple of months so I've instituted a, a fairly strict reporting system where um, one person is responsible for the money and they have to tally it up at uh, right now three times a day. We're going to, once we balance several times, several months, then we'll cut that down and then eventually go back to once a day. Um, but we need to come out to the exact dollar. Well, it's sometimes when people make change, they give the wrong amount of change or they write the wrong amount on the receipt and um, we have to balance with the receipts and with what's in the software. So um, we have cleared that with finance, they've approved the plan and it's underway. Now personnel, any more questions on collections? Personnel. Um, the drug diversion program counselor who works for the DA's office but who is paid by us under the invoice that you all approve every month has completed her master's degree and she's asked us for a raise. Um, I think this is a reasonable request. Celeste uh, went through all of the uh, um, expenses that we have under this invoice and said we would have enough to give her a $5,000 raise. And so I wanted to see if that was okay with you all. But Susan, last year when I told this board what this was for, and we agreed to pay it again last year. It was paid by a grant, and I thought that we were y'all were going to apply for a grant to cover this. Year before last, it was reimbursed um, by the Government Safe and Drug Program. Government Safe and Drug Program. I think it was Government Safe. Yeah. And they, they won't pay that. Mm -hmm. no, none of the you know those 
prevention grants will only pay for prevention services. This is a true. No, this was a grant. This was a grant that wasn't a prevention grant. This was a grant written through the grants department, the parish grants department, and uh, Mr. Harold Marshall and them was there when we were getting this money. Okay, this was before my time. I, I don't know. Right, that's what I said. But I talked this board into going along with it until we we re, we applied for a grant to cover it. Now then, they can they can do as they see see fit. But uh, I just want them to clear it up. I'm not going to ask y'all to do it again without us trying to get a grant for it. Okay. So, are you saying defer this, or when does that contract come up? You can't, you can't move on that, no. Huh? It's so on your list of contracts. Annually, I think no. in November, no. October, the end of November. Okay. But, but giving giving the counselor this is not one of our counselors. This is the counselor Duke. DA's office. Uh, giving her a raise will not change the amount of the of grant. The it's, it still I, leaves some, I mean, the agreement it still leaves some money uh, left over. A question. Do as far as the parish is concerned and as far as uh, finances with mental health is concerned, is there a pay scale for, uh, you know, uh, uh, a doctor's, bachelor's plus 30, master's plus 30? Uh, do y'all have that scale? Is it $5,000 if you receive a... Actually, she would be way below any scale that we have, even with the $5,000. No, what I'm saying is, is it a, 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 do y'all have a salary cap base? Where sure. if you start well, out making so rate. much in dollars and you go to college, you you, you know, yeah. does you do you go up or I mean if it's there, I mean if she have the credentials. But she's not a parish employee. Okay, I'm saying she's she's a mental health employee, yeah. right? She's Contra. she's an employee of the district of the 23rd judicial district. Oh, okay, well, that's a different story. And they're delighted if we get her. I see why you <laughs> said the grant paid for it now. Yeah. Well, Mr. McConnell is supposed to be looking into this particular situation and he just hadn't gotten right back with us just yet okay. so I will be contacting him we'll okay. be able to give you an answer by October, by October. Okay. okay under grants number four um, our coordinator for governor safe and drug free our, our um, strengthening families coordinator resigned last week um, she resigned for medical reasons and um, her assistant resigned at the same time to go to graduate school. So we would do to start today our, our new cycle of strengthening families um, paid for by Governor Safe, Safe and Drug Free. Um, what I have done is, um, question? That's just two contracts we approved last? Yeah, mm -hmm. we just approved. Okay, yeah. all right, uh, keep um, me straight. Yeah. What she recommended two teachers in Donisonville. I, I would like Donisonville residents to do this group because it's important. Very good. I mean, I don't want somebody from Baton Rouge mm -hmm. coming, you know, into the community for this particular group. And um, we found two teachers that she recommended very highly, and I interviewed um, the one of them this afternoon, and they're very interested and want to do it, and I was really very pleased. So um, we're going to have to work out the money. Uh, on, we have to rebudget the grant since we were scheduled to start this week. But that's the grant that we lost the five thousand and something dollars in. They cut they cut us down to from nope. forty to twenty five. But last year we didn't spend all the five thousand seven hundred, so that's we right. had to return that. That's okay, right. so we want to make sure that we get enough families involved in this to use this because I know strength and families in Donaldsonville we should have. Well, we'll do our needs assessment. We'll have some information. We, and we pay them to go, you know, to spend time to find people and to call them and follow up with them. So mm -hmm. there are a whole series of services that they provide. And in teachers in school will know also by having these yeah. children in I school. That be, sounds like a great a choice. I'm yeah. very, very, very pleased. Yeah. Yeah, right. um, nothing to report on the two capital, well, capital area prevention grant, we, we don't have anything to report. Under the treatment grant, we're developing our in, uh, intensive outpatient program, and we've had five or six people uh, sign up for it, so um, we have to serve 80 through the year, so we, we're getting underway as fast as possible. Can you say a little bit more about that? It's a new IOP program? Right. And how is it? Uh, intensive outpatient is an outpatient substance abuse treatment program that requires nine hours a week 
of service. And hadn't we been having an no. outpatient? No, we've had what's called regular outpatient, As opposed and to our regular outpatient program is four hours a week for 16 weeks. Um, we are contracted for a capital area, and beginning July 1st, they said start an intensive outpatient program. So we said, you bet. Okay. And uh, we put it together. It's not quite finished yet, but um, I'm still working on the on the uh, policies for it. But um, we have a few people signed up. But that's that's actually ours is going to be 10 hours a week. So it's four hours a night. Mm -hmm. eight and then one hour I think is how they have it set up okay so. um, do you know if there has been any consideration to um, an intensive outpatient gender specific treatment um, I've thought about it from time to time I don't think we could make our numbers but we can certainly look at it um, that most of our outpatient clients are men I mean the majority are men but we, we have some women um, it would be very nice we tried uh, very hard last year to do um, a sexual abuse survivors group because a lot of females who have substance abuse issues have also been right. sexually abused or, or physically mm -hmm. abused. And that went very well for five or six weeks and, and then we couldn't get anybody to come. Hmm. Um, it just dwindled off. We can start that up again, to, you know, any time. But um, Okay, I know we have, um we're working with Capital Area and have a gender-specific IOP program going mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge. And they have a waiting list right. um, a mile long, and it seems like once the women know about it, they're more willing to come to that, especially um, the pregnant women. And, and we'll work on it. I mean, the pregnant women are the highest priority mm -hmm. to serve, mm -hmm. so um, we'll look at the figures for last year and see and see what we can do with that. Okay. We, we're trying to stretch our staff so that everybody's busy and we don't take on any new staff and um, there are only so many hours that we you know can can serve in the afternoon but I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, number D, East Ascension Parish Hospital Service District Board funds. Uh, uh, Ms. Um, Stafford called me and said where's the plan <laughs> and I said well you know, the the board is, is doing the needs assessment. So did she call you? She said she Yes, ma'am, call she called me. Okay. And well, um, now Susan on on that pro on that program, you y'all are welcome to to tell us where we need to go with this. Now, if I understand with Cynthia right, she's interested in us taking in uh children and 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 uh young adults, well up to thirty, I get yeah, that's young. <laughs> and, and and seeing those if these don't have insurance and don't pay and I try I tried to tell her we do, we do. serve that. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what kind of program other than to wait for the needs assessment to tell us mm -hmm. and maybe Don, uh, open Donaldson well, I keep saying open Donaldsonville to but till we get our needs assessment and see what we need over there. And if we need somebody to write a special program for Cynthia, well, did you understand that? I wrote a I wrote a special program for them. Oh, and that and I put it in your folder. Um, I figured the more options we had, the better. Okay. What, what well, I that you presented us tonight, I haven't seen. No, that, no, so. none of you have seen. I just gave it to yeah. you tonight. I just finished okay. it yesterday. Well, I, I'm just you know, cause the it's first time she talked program. to me, she told me not to advertise it because she didn't want anybody. Uh, wanting that money. <laughs> she wanted you to have it, so well, I was just... I, I wanted to have something it, so maybe we could look at three or four options. Yeah, mm -hmm. instead well, that's, of that's one. So too. It looks like this, so please, it's just two pages. Um, take a look at it and see what you think. Uh, uh, well, and when you have time. what I wanted to talk uh -huh. to you about. If you knew something through the children's programs or uh -huh. some special, I think she wants it dedicated yeah. to a special program. Okay, it, have you... Um, had any experience looking at multi-systemic therapy and particularly for adolescents that model no okay I'll I'll send you some of the information okay. on it um, that group was is very interested in in possibly working in this area but what I recommended in in the um, proposal is um, a, a parish-wide screening program for adolescents that uh, would identify um, children who are adolescents who are experiencing problems. This is with their parents' consent and with their consent. And then um, 
ideally through the schools, but that's of course with the school board's permission. Um, then there's a, pr there's a program out there that's being used across the country that I think would be very appropriate. So it's all explained in there, yeah. and, I, and I can answer your questions about it. Yeah. Next well, time. she discussed uh, children who at 18 years old are dropped off of their parents' insurances due to age, mm -hmm. and they have substance abuse or especially mental health, and they can't afford to come. They can come to us. But I told her that, and she said, well, maybe we could set, maybe we could take uh, walk-ins on it. Not walk-ins right now, but we can talk, we can talk. Well, that's what it. I said. Uh, this we is this is a lot of money to turn down just because we don't take walk-ins. Well, and we, cer we certainly can, um, you know, maybe. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I'm just throwing that out there sure. because I want us to. I'm open to any option, to. but I'd like okay. you to read my proposal and, and see. I will, uh, what, I will. I didn't know it was here. Okay. Um, under number five, um, delivered the policies and procedures again that have been lawyered to pieces. <laughs> But that's the that's the polished copy, and uh, Mrs. Gotro has the red line copy that has every change marked, so you can compare the changes. Um, I don't have anything to report under contracts and letters of agreement. That stuff is pending. Um, the last thing I have, or the second last thing I have for you, is a quality improvement report. If you look at this this piece of paper with the two tables on it. We have been tracking um, patient satisfaction surveys. We started toward the end of 2005. This is, mm -hmm. no, here. It's a little summary table. Oh. We started toward the end of 2005. We did more in 2006. Um, we're improving, uh, getting them back in 2007. I gave you the number of services we provided, the number of surveys we received, and the number of complaints. And then if you look at the second table, I broke the complaints down by year and by group, whether they were complaining about the doctors or a counselor or the reception staff, the security guard, one person complained about the security guard, um, and five of them weren't complaining about anybody. Um, if you would like to see the specific, what I do is I keep a log on every complaint. And that looks like this. And I gave it to you. I just took off the case numbers. And they're arranged by case number. <coughs> if someone made a complaint, most of them don't. Most of them say it's fine, we're doing fine. But if they made a complaint, I logged it. And then I have a separate form where I shows who followed up with it and what the outcome was. Um, when you see complaints about our doctors, keep in mind that patients frequently want a certain kind of medication. Um, they get very angry if they don't get it, particularly you know if it's something like a tranquilizer, or, or you know they may come in um, deciding that their child needs Ritalin, and the, and the psychiatrist might prefer not to give that to them for whatever reason or, or make another diagnosis. So um, we do get one or two complaints. And they're all the exact um, text to the complaint and the resolution is listed there. I'm going to be doing this every year. Uh, I think I'm going to move it to January probably, but um, reporting on the whole year of the previous year instead of three years at a time. And the last thing I had on my report was um, to ask, we have money in our budget to paint the waiting room in the Gonzales clinic, and we'd like to do that, and we'd like to install the chair rails, so there's no point in painting it unless the chair rails are there because it's just going to rub the paint off again. I think it looked beautiful to me the way it is right now. Well, let's see, I think it was last painted in 1995. When the last time it had been painted in Donaldsonville? Well, Donaldsonville is going to be painted. It's, <laughs> it's already in the works. <laughs> Remember that we have many, many more people going through the Gonzales Clinic, and we have all of the state. Yeah, I do know that. 
uh, clients, so that that waiting room gets a great deal of um, rough handling. So we will, I listed the things I'd like to do. Repaint the front door. Um, I would very much like to put the name of the clinic, of our clinic and of Gonzales, on the inside of the door, like businesses have the little white letters that say the hours, and, and now we have a bunch of tacky signs just stuck all over the door. It looks pretty bad. It's, it's actually not very expensive. It runs about $300. They'll do Donisonville and Gonzales. Doors both. Do you want us to decide now? Mm -hmm. I don't have to know today. Next next month is time time enough. And um, I just think it would make both clinics look very much more professional. Mm -hmm. And um, we can we I think we have enough money to pay to change the signs on the outside of the building, the sandblasting, and all of that. Um, we, when you all get some. Quotes. I think we can probably take it out of the money that we budgeted for this year. This year. And my question, when you're considering that, is: Do you want to just put our name outside the building, or Gonzales Mental Health also? That's uh, something to decide. The state. The mm -hmm. state sign too. No, I'm, that's what I'm asking. Do you that's want? That's what to I said. Well, well, yeah. Okay. Right. I know we have a committee and all, <coughs> and I. I, I I keep saying this over and over and over again, and first of all, I'm going to start off by saying it as far as, yes, I live in Donaldsonville, okay, and no, I'm not here just for Donaldsonville, okay, but to me, it's a, it's, it's a parish organization, and I believe I've said this numerous of times, and it's it's an impact on me as well as I don't mean I don't know how the people feel, but it's an impact to me to constantly put so much funding in the building because they have more people. And when I make a round in the Downsville Clinic to see how everything's going, there's employees, state employees in there make comments by saying, "Oh, I'm so glad somebody trying to get us out of the '60s or trying to get us out of the '50s." That's embarrassing. Okay, not only on my part, but it's embarrassing for the whole parish due to the fact that that building should be looking better than what it is right now. Okay, yeah, we have the, the painting done on the outside. Okay, if you go stand in that lobby, when the last time you've been to Downsonville Clinic? Month. Hmm? About a month. Okay. If you stand in that lobby in that Donaldsonville Clinic, I see why people from Donaldsonville come to get treated in Gonzales. Okay, there's mold on the wall. There's uh, wallpaper falling down off the wall. But you're in charge well, of getting no, that no, fixed. Well, no, 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 no. That's money. not. I understand. That's not. That's not my point. Okay, we're in charge as of two months ago when we when we form a committee, because if we wouldn't have formed no committee. We wouldn't have got nothing done because all the impact was you wanted this in, in, in Gonzales. You wanted soundproof walls. You wanted you wanted new furniture that we didn't never approve. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, I saw it all. I mean, a whole lot of things that have been bought that we haven't even approved it as far as what you need in the office, this, that, and the other. But I have a problem as being represented on this board. If I was a director in your position, I would try to get both clinics the same. Equal opportunity for everybody. If this the way this one look, let that one look the same. Okay, but don't bring one up to par and leave one down because no services is there. Where if it stay down, then no one is going to go there. We have to have something there for the people to come rather than to come there and sit down looking at mold on the wall, looking at cracked glass, looking at this, looking at that. Me and Brian, we're doing as much as we can. As a board member and with this committee we have here, we got one thing done. Is a lot more need to be done over there, a lot more. But I, I really would like to, uh, if push comes to a shove, I really wanted all the council members, even including the parish president, to go over there and look at it, so they can see who coming in and out of there, and maybe they would take into consideration some type of compassion as far as. 
people coming to this facility knowing it's a Paris building. Okay, there's nothing wrong with the building, nothing wrong with fixing the air conditioning if you need repaired. My thing is, is, is to upgrade the building, it's to upgrade the facility. Okay, the furniture in there, don't talk about the kitchen area. I, I, I refuse to go there. I mean, I, that, the kitchen area looked like I was two years old if I walk in there right now. I mean, that's just the way it looks. Now, it's clean, don't get me wrong, it's clean. They're working with what they have, but it's not up to par, where uh, it's 120% it's, it's better over here than over there. So that's probably one of the reasons why they come. Okay. It's not that they're being embarrassed. I mean, I just don't know what else to do. I mean, I... I, I well, Jared, let's, let's... You know, and, and, and as far as... Uh, I don't have a problem with you doing your repairs in Gonzales, don't get me wrong. Okay, but it's an impact on me as well as the people on the other side of the river. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm the only one in here from on the other side of the river. Okay, I have to go back on the other side of the river. Okay, uh, and by me being representation on this board, I'm going to do what I have to do to make sure the needs get done over there correctly and promptly, whereas if in Gonzales also, because I look at things on the aspect is for everybody. This is a parish. Okay, it's not the state of Gonzales. It's the parish. It's the parish thing. Okay, and if one building going to look presentable, then the next building gonna look presentable. It don't make no sense for us to go back and forth. Okay, you getting your lobby done, so me and Brian gonna get together. We gonna get down for your lobby done. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. If you're gonna request chairs for Gonzalez, what's wrong with picking up the phone and say, Mr. Butler, could you pass by the Gonzalez uh, Downsville Clinic while you're over there and look at the lobby and let me know how the chairs look? Do they need some more chairs? This, that, another. Or Brian, if you was on that side, will you please check it out? We don't get that. Okay. It's time we work together and stop being separate, okay? Because we're not getting nowhere like that. That's my opinion. So, I mean, if you're going to do for one, do for the other one. I know we're in charge as of now for two months ago, but I've been on this board a year, almost a year and a half now, okay? And I, I never see no improvement with you with the Downs of your clinic. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, that's my opinion. Not even as far as going over there. You say been over there a month ago. Okay. Uh, so, if I, if I was a director, I'd be over there once a week. Well, it costs the parish every time I get in my car and drive over there. So. Well, you don't want to say you don't like going over there, so. I didn't say any such thing. Well. <laughs> uh, I just, is there anything else on my report that you have questions about? Thank you. to approve the DA's invoice. It's in your, that was given to you tonight. I think it's the regular. A motion, make a motion that we approve the DA's invoice. One second. Thank you. Any, oh, just a minute, anybody object? No objection. Stands as approved. Okay. And the next thing we have is our budget. Everybody has? A copy of the budget. Mm -hmm. Well, on the budget, I find, and then we'll let Celeste tell us different. Oh, we we combined all the expenses, the substance abuse and the mental health, are, are combined on one sheet, each department. On the first one, we have one. Uh, vacancy on uh, a licensed mental health director, which is $44,000. And before that position is filled, she will have to come to the board to get approval. And other than that, they moved the nurse from that department down to the next department. And that's the reason your figures look a little bit off there. But otherwise, they, uh, pretty much fall into line as far as I can find. And then on your uh, next one, uh, your uh, 404, your contract labor, it's down about uh, $9,000. Your federal tax, you cannot change. That's taken out due to salaries. Your retirement is also a formula that's figured there. You can't change that. And then your health insurance, that's a formula. You can't change that. 
There's one thing, uh, Celeste, this 409 health savings account exempt. We've never had that before, right? That's correct. It's a um, health savings account expense. Each employee um, was able to pick whether they wanted um, two different types of plans uh, for insurance. If they went with the health savings account, then the parish contributed $100 per employee into an account for them to use as their co-pays or their deductibles. So they're not under the li uh, they're not under the other insurance plan. Yes, there is a cost that's under that plan, but it's an additional $100 that also goes into a savings account. But when that plan was selected, the insurance premium was a lot cheaper. If you look at the cost from 2006 to 2007, the difference, All right? you see like $60,000 difference. That was from employees that didn't take the plan, plus it was for employees So we offer who took this to both? Uh, to they can take both of them? No, they oh, can no. only select one plan. All right, that's what I was asking for. And so six selected this plan? Correct. Okay. And then you have your legal, which is 2000 We had 2000 Your electrical is 700 more, which is, I think that's very cheap if we get by with that. Your telephone falls 5000 over, which I find is okay. Your equipment rental. 5900 that's a little bit less than last year. And then your maintenance on your building and all, it's a little bit less than last year's was. Uh, the other thing that is still in front of Jerry Savoy is this $40,000 for your coroner's fees. They still haven't got back with me with an answer on that. Then your doctor's, that's contract your magazines, your insurance, your workman's compensation, you can't change that. The other one is uh, insurance, other insurance, you can't change that. Office supplies, that's down some. Uh, operating supplies, that's down. Uh, miscellaneous travel, mileage. Uh, I, I got a question about that, but I'll ask Susan about that later. But it, this is fine, but I just have some information I need to get. The DAs, okay, and your equipment, which is, is your computers, buying two computers, and your uh, soundproofing of the Ascension Parish office. That's, that's soundproofing the parish side. Is ten thousand dollars to say? Uh, did we get an estimate on that? Is ten thousand dollars to do that? Oh, that's just a. It's just a guess. Now we're not going to pay no architect to come in there and tell us how to do that. <laughs> okay. Well, I got an email to that effect. That's up to y'all if y'all want that soundproof in there, uh, and and the salary. Like she said, that's an estimate. Okay. And then the retirement tax you can't change, and then what's a, a, a miscellaneous expenditures. And she's, the budget is $84,300 less than what we approved last year. Anybody got any questions? No questions. Mr. Butler, you got something on Where's your Donaldsonville Clinic repairs? Oh, we got yeah, enough I mean, money in last year's budget to take care of, to cover it, mm -hmm. you think? I was going to cover that in uh, the bottom on my old business. Well, as long as, as you don't think that you need anything to go in this budget. Now, the only thing, ladies and gentlemen, that I think might change is when we get our needs assessment in, we mm -hmm. may have to do some budget alterations, but we can go back and do a special thing. I thought about that too. Okay. I was, was going to call you and ask you about that. I was trying to figure out, I was like, yeah, they're going to have to do that. Yeah. Well, we don't. Yeah. Well, would somebody like to make a motion that we accept this or y'all want to go back and look at it again? A motion we approve the budget. Any objections? No objections. No objections. Budget stands as approved. Ms. Susan, if there's anything that we need to change in it, let us know before we turn it in. Okay. 
Okay. Anything under old business, the needs assessment. And I'm sorry, Miss Rinder, I put Miss Z's name there. I thought you were going to be out of town, but we turn it over to you. Oh, she can, well. And she'll talk about her little. Yeah, well, yeah. She, and, she and I discussed, and I asked her to do the meeting part of it, and I'll do the footwork of the actual oh. activity. Thank you. So go ahead, Miss Rinder. Thank you. <laughs> um, we had a meeting on August 6th with the um, contractors, Robert Rose Consulting Team. Um, we reviewed the goals and the objectives that we um, set forth initially. We reviewed the work plan. Uh, they gave us a copy, a very detailed work plan, broken down week by week. They are exactly on schedule um, and expected to complete in the eight weeks as they proposed which will be the week of August 27th through 31st. Um, they are scheduled to do a final presentation of the needs assessment to the board um, in September. Um, we also went through the um, survey that they proposed, the instrument, um, had input from board members and made some modifications to it. and. Um, I think, Ms. Z, you talked about the survey. Yes. And then um, we finalized the distribution locations, and then we spent some time identifying community stakeholders that would participate in the um, focus groups and um, uh, that they would interview. Okay. Okay. You want to talk? I, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Marcy LeBlanc and the brothers, Mr. Damien Sheets, and uh, LeBlanc Payless Center for permission to do the uh, survey. We've done a survey at the LeBlanc in Purville on Highway 42. Uh, we've done a survey at the LeBlanc in Donaldsonville. And uh, coming up this Friday, the 17th, we'll be at the Walmart in Donaldsonville from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, Saturday, we'll be at Two Rows Grocery in Santa Mar and Delone's Grocery. That'll be Two Rows from 8 to 12 and DeLone from four to six. The following Tuesday, we are plan to be at the Dollar General in Gonzales, Louisiana, next to Office Depot. And we've been having a real good time out there. We've been getting some great response. And so like I said, on behalf of this board and the Sanction Parish Administration, we would like to thank all those who are giving us permission to come out and just be on their premises. One of the places we were able to go on the inside. So I really thank Mr. <laughs> sheets for that. He allowed us to come on the inside and the young ladies from Roberts Roads is doing such an excellent job. So we're grateful and we're looking forward to the future places that we're going to be. And invite anybody that's interested in to yes, come out. Yes, and we are letting the public know through this medium that you're welcome to come out and do a survey. We want your opinion on what you think that you need in your community. Thank you. Okay, that's it. All right. Thank y'all. Mr. Jerry Sawa, Dawsonville Mental Health Repair Building. Jerry Sawa. I mean, oh, Jerry Sawa. I'm sorry. I come apologize. Come on, come on, come on. Jerry Butler. <laughs> I'm still talking with Mr. Sawa on uh, my $40,000 for my <laughs> coroner's fees. Okay, as of uh, August 8, 2007, the outside of the building has been completed. Uh, yes, Miss. Uh, Miss, Miss Celeste, I did go. I went before I came here. It's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Which it was raining, so I know on a sunny day it's going to brighten up out there. Um, so that is completed. One stage is done. Uh, my next thing is to get the board to uh, get with me as far as working toward the inside now. One is done. Uh, I need to get with Celeste as far as trying to get some bids for the inside. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do, we need to get together and maybe do a walkthrough to see what we want painted, what need to be painted, what part of the in inside that need to be painted. But because I see when I went last time I went um, with me and when well, we went to uh, look at the building, some some parts is look like it's fresh, you know. So. Mm -hmm. You know, some you heard I say, huh? Some parts look fresh. <laughs> well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna get a, uh, somebody so to go in, I don't in. know if you want to do the whole entire building inside or 
Why don't you get an appraiser for the whole building and an appraiser for part of it if you think that? I mean, that's, I mean, we can you're do that You're going to paint also, it and you're going to move stuff around. You may as well paint the whole thing while you're at it, huh? Yeah, that's what I say, you know. So one stage is done. So any thoughts? One thing I would like to um, request that I stated earlier, um, is it possible that maybe the board can send out a letter to each one of the councilmen and let them go see for themselves? Uh, maybe at least, at least they get a chance to come to the Downsville Clinic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, on, on a volunteer basis, uh, which I'm going to get with um, Councilman Joseph and Councilman Kent Shakes now who represent on that side. Uh, I'm gonna get with them because I'm no, I'm willing to bet they'll come soon as I call their show up. So, I not, I can't speak for the rest of them, but I can speak for those two. Uh, see if I can get them over there. Let them give a walkthrough, you know, to let them see what we actually trying to do, you know, and uh, not not just state that I'm impacting on one building, but I'm trying to bring it up to par, you know. So maybe we can get more services. That might be one of the problems. Okay. So, and I noticed that water fountain in there need repaired also. So, I mean, it's leaking, it's rusting all around the bottom of the floor, you know. So, that's something y'all might want to look at as far as contamination, the hazard, you know. I'll get Miss Celeste to get you. Whatever, I'll place a work you know. order in for it. Huh? I'll place a work order in to get that repaired. No, I'm just saying, you might yeah. not have to replace the whole thing. It's just something that I, you know, I glanced at in the yeah. lobby area. And the other thing, Jerry, All is... That, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of things, you know, but I'm going to go over there one day and uh, do a walkthrough myself and maybe jot some things down. Uh, man, you know, I, I wanted somebody else there with me besides just me. I'll go with you. You know. I mean, what we need to do is just prioritize what what we think needs Before to be done Before we even put, yeah. put together some type of plan as far as what we want painted, and what we want done. So I have to do is you know, walk through, committee. make a list and of what needs to be done and prioritize it and start with number one. Okay. And what about the sign on the outside of the building? Well, that, we had put that on, we had tabled that until we get some estimates or something. Something else was going on. I don't know what it was. We had something going on. I think it was, we had got tied up with the roofing. But we paying somebody to come out there to check the roof mm -hmm. and give them, what, $1,200 just to go up there and look at the roof, mm -hmm. which I didn't agree with that at all. You know, I mean, that's something maintenance should have done. You know, Miss Celeste, do we know. have money in last year's budget to change that sign? I'm sure there'll be. I'm sure there's enough. The so why don't, don't we, uh, whatever. I mean, that's their committee, but why don't y'all put a, a bid out to get the... Now we can do Main that also. put up on the building and, and, and let's get the building cleaned up inside yeah, and outside since we're already now. On the outside, let's jump to the sign. Let's do that. Okay. You know, see okay. if we can get some estimates out for that, Celeste. Is, is that okay Mr. with Brian, you? you got anything? What you got, Brian? Uh, okay, we just need to make an exact list of what needs to be done and start from there. Since we're already on the outside, you know, I'm yeah. looking at the that's fine. Design, yeah. you know. But since last in last year's budget, you sure. know, go ahead and, sure. and no do problem as much with, as you can, right? No problem with looking at anything and trying to get anything done. Right. And you just you, you got you start from square one and go from there. Exactly. You know, it's an easy thing to do. Anybody have anything under new business? If not, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I uh, second. Thank y'all.